Now I want to begin by, by stating that we need to uh, distinguish between that which Allah has forbidden specifically because of itself, what we say haram li dhatihi, and that which the sharia has forbidden because it leads to haram, haram li ghayrihi. So generally speaking, we all understand that there's one thing that is haram li dhatihi, and there are many things that's haram li ghayrihi. So classic example, zina, that is haram li dhatihi. But what leads to zina? It is the lustful gaze, it is flirtation, it is being alone with a woman. All of these are also haram. What is haram li dhatihi? Drinking alcohol. But what leads to that? Selling alcohol and transporting alcohol and uh, you know um, uh, being in the presence where alcohol is consumed. Uh, and not all of them are the same level, by the way. I mean, just give, I'm giving you some random lists here. Obviously, each of these is a different uh, category in sin. But the point is that there are things that are forbidden in and of themselves. And then there are avenues that Allah Azza wa Jal wants to shut because when you open this door, you know, you're just gonna go all the way until you get to this actual uh, sin. And so we all know, for example, that all uh, um, fahisha, it starts with the lustful gaze and the lustful talk. So then obviously we should stop it from the very uh, beginning. Still, the means do not take the same rulings as the ends in terms of sins. And therefore, and this is well known, especially when it comes to buyu uh, uh, or transactions, and I've spoken about this in other uh, lectures, that which is forbidden indirectly, that which is forbidden not because of itself, but because it leads to haram, it may become discouraged, makruh, or strongly disliked, depending on the circumstance. And so the sin will not be there, but the karaha will remain. And so here we get to this reality, this awkward reality, and I brought this up quite a few times. And um, I, I, I do, I don't like to have to mention these types of things, but what can one do in this regard? That the internet has made fatwa shopping just like a buffet, you can find anything. And it is very common to find many groups of scholars, uh, especially from lands far, far away, uh, lands that are themselves, uh, you know, going through their own issues. But anyway, that's besides the point, that you will find uh, websites, you know, that answer Q&A of Islam, that pretty much make everything blanket haram. Like literally there's hardly anything except that haram, haram, haram. And the fact of the matter is that many people love these fatawa. And when I or others come along and try to dig through and make some things makroo and haram and whatnot, even though I quote other ulama, it doesn't matter. There is a huge you know, backlash and liberalization and you're a sellout and this and that. And generally speaking, the people who are of this ilk, generally speaking, they're particular demographics. And I'm sorry to say this, they're young males. That's generally the case. And they are ultra strict in their ideal utopia, but that's not the way the world works. And these fatawa, they might be popular in terms of YouTube links or viewers, but they are simply ignored when it comes to actual Muslims living in and working in the workplace here in the corporate side of things. And they have no relevance to the lived lives of people who are working in uh, 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 the workplace in, in, in all Western lands, dare I say even in Eastern lands, but let's not go over there. So the point is that when fatawa simply become non-viable, and when a fatwa becomes utterly meaningless for all practical purposes, then firstly, those who love such fatawa should open their eyes and smell the coffee as, is, as the saying goes. And secondly, uh, it becomes obligatory on those people of knowledge or students of knowledge like myself to really then chime in and say with utmost respect to our ulama 3,000 miles away, 5,000 miles away, you know, we have to ask them to mind their own societies and we have to speak to our peoples. How many people come to me in the corporate office? And by the way, FYI, I have also dabbled, as I've said multiple times in the corporate world and I have worked in the corporate world for a, a while. And also when I was in academia and I'm still in academia, you know, it's not as if academia is, is separate. We also have to do, you know, things that people in the masjid communities or shiuch who live uh, separate, maybe not fully understand or realize. So my point being that with humility and respect, I say that I am fairly familiar with that type of environment and 
those who have never lived or worked it, uh, it is much easier for them to be idealistic and to give these very nice sounding fatawa that resonate amongst college kids who have never worked and resonate amongst people who would like to see such a world but don't inhabit the real world, but it doesn't resonate with the people who are actually working in the office uh, themselves. So I'm going to bring up a number of issues here that we should be aware of first and foremost, that uh, perhaps the most important is that our fuqaha have discussed something that is called ma'ammat bihil balwa, that that which everybody in society is doing even though they should not do it. And that when an evil or when something that is makruh becomes the norm, the shari ruling has to be adjusted in light of the norm for people who interact with that. And this is a lived reality that nobody can deny. Again, you know, may Allah protect all of us. I have to always point out that uh, this, this, this uh, reality of criticizing and refuting uh, people of knowledge and people of uh, uh, you know training by people who haven't studied or trained, it has caused so much damage in the social media and people are so confused. But the fact of the matter is that this is a real issue of fiqh, a real issue of the scholars of Islam that they're well aware of. And that is when an evil becomes commonplace, you cannot expect to apply the exact same ruling than when the evil was not commonplace. And there are specialized treatises and books written. There's, you know, dissertations written about this issue of ma'amat ma, ma or ma'amat bihil al balwa. And no doubt, when our scholars discuss these issues, they too need to fear Allah and not open up the floodgates. But still, let us be realistic here. We're living in a society at a time and a place where the rules of hijab do not exist in the Western world. Frankly, even in the Eastern world, they do not exist. The rules of, uh, in the Western world, alcohol is rampant everywhere. In every gathering almost, or in every business meeting or whatnot, people are drinking. If you wish to live in these lands. And by the way, it's not as if going somewhere is going to solve all of these problems. You're going to have another set of problems. There is no utopia anywhere in the world. If you wish to work in corporate uh, lifestyles, you're going to be exposed to things that there is no running away from. And therefore, we need to keep in mind a number of things. First and foremost, that which is haram in and of itself versus that which is haram because it leads to haram. Secondly, the issue of that which is muntashir, that which is commonly practiced, doesn't take the same ruling as that which is not practiced. And thirdly, the fact that somebody is forced to do something because of social pressure, because of awkwardness, is not the same as somebody who willingly goes out of his way and embraces something. And the last point, the gen generic rule, which is the most important rule, Allah says in the Quran, Fattakullaha mastata'atum. Fear Allah as much as you can fear Him, as much as it's possible to fear Him. We cannot reach perfection. We strive as much as we can. So for example, uh, that which is haram li dhatihi is drinking. Under no circumstances should you cave under pressure because it's awkward unless somebody is threatening to kill you, obviously then you're forgiven. Otherwise, that which is haram li dhatihi, right? Zina is haram li dhatihi, drinking is haram li dhatihi. Under no circumstance should you feel awkward and then fall into these things. Uh, on the other hand, that which you are pressured socially to do for some يعني, maslaha, being in the environment where there's alcohol. It is not the same sin, nowhere near the sin as of course drinking alcohol. So to answer these questions again generically, uh, our sister's asking about wearing scrubs and you know the, the forearms exposed and whatnot. And again, the response is, look, يعني, what can I say? There, you, the, being in the healthcare system, I understand they have the rules and frankly, the rules are put for a reason, I understand that they want your hands to be constantly washed so you cannot be wearing stuff here. You're gonna put the gloves on all the way there. Uh, the scrubs are there because they wanna be moving about. So yeah, and you try your best to wear the loosest scrubs that you can. Try your best maybe to get an exception for yourself. And uh, by the way, talk to your bosses. A lot of times the rules might be there, but yeah, and on a one-on -one case, they might just let you wear a full you know, sleeve or whatnot. If it's not allowed to and they're making, you know, they say the rule is gonna be applied, then yeah, and what can I say? Don't live your life lifestyle, you know, based upon that clothing. And yani, when you're finishing work and go back home, then obviously go more, more modest. But at that point in time, yani, what else can I say? I mean, fear Allah as much as you can.